Hi there, really Ron here. Thank you for joining me in another lesson in my course on how to simplify in watercolor. This one's gonna be a little different and a little fun, I think. Uh, what I wanna do today is focus on simplification and learning it from the master. So this is kind of similar to my painting master series on YouTube, but what I wanna do this time is look at it through the lens of simplification because we have a lot to learn. And I chose, I think, a wide array of artists with very different styles and varying degrees and obviously it's still in the realm of the things I'm familiar with but I do think these are going to be great examples on how to simplify in a way that works and it works personally and a lot of it is subjective and, and based on taste so I don't want you to get a large sample. It is important to in a way expand our horizon so we kind of know what is out there and then we can use that to enrich our own style. So without further ado, let's start looking at some artworks. Okay, so you may want to buckle up because this is going to be a long one. We're going to look at a lot of paintings and a lot of artists. Uh, one thing I will make this different from my Painting Masters series on YouTube um, is in that we will look at it from the spectrum of uh, simplification. We won't review all of the <laughs> paintings and, and all of that, of course. So we're going to get started with Victoria Preshetko, um, an artist I really admire for the way she approaches painting. She has a very distinct style and one thing you'll immediately notice is that simplification when it comes to the colors and temperature. Her paintings usually contain one or two very clear colors and she likes to push the temperature all the way. So you get a very saturated blue and a very saturated yellow or a very saturated uh, purple and a very saturated kind of orange or red. And you can see this in all of her paintings and the rest kind of falls to the side and isn't as important. So within the shapes, not many details. Uh, within the larger spaces, not necessarily many details, really dumbing the scene down to the bare minimum to create a very interesting uh, composition and definitely not in a dumb way because there's so much going on still within that. Look at that. Beautiful, very strong strongly saturated colors. One more thing you will notice is the simplification and editing of edges. Look at all of these blurry blended edges as opposed to the sharp ones. And a very interesting way of doing that here is the sharp water and the softer bridge, which is kind of reverse of what you'd guess it would be. But it's, it really is a way of dictating our attention. Like you're immediately attracted to the water in the foreground and this kind of goes blended and in the background. And always the simplification of strong saturation, strong values. Look at this one. A little more accurate in terms of, uh, uh, more detailed maybe, um, and, and bold in terms of the light and shadow. So stronger contrasts here on the light and shadow. But within the large shapes, very blended. This is one of my favorites by Herbs, by the way. Uh, very blended and a minimum of details within the shapes, okay? A lot of the details, funny enough, are in the white areas. Um, and again, minimum of shapes around the edges and always that beautiful simplification of the, of the temperature and colors, just on the axis of strong warm, strong cool. That's a beautiful, here's another one that I wanted to show you. Uh, again, look at this large shape. It's a huge shape with almost no details in it, very scarce details in it, completely merged with this awning in the foreground, completely merged with the wall here, just bringing out a few small details. The only real separate shapes here are the people in a way, maybe some of the tables here, uh, in that strong yellow, strong turquoise, strong red, strong blue. Um, just the axis of warm and cool. So I think that's the last one by, oh, here we have another one. And now here it's reversed. All of it is blue and just a bit of it is red. Uh, just beautiful works. I wish we could stop and really talk more in detail about each and every one. But as you'll see, we have quite a lot of these. But I do want you to gain some essence from every artist we're looking at. And here it's definitely that play of temperature and creating that interest. Very clever editing of just placing big shapes and contrasted maybe with small shapes as the people. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need really for a, for an interesting painting and a good composition. So that's Victoria. Let's move on to the next one. We have James Gurney, another really amazing artist, posts a lot of YouTube videos as well, so you can see his processes. Very realistic um, compared to some of the other artists we will see, uh, but he paints very small using gouache and watercolor. We won't look just as watercolor, as, just on watercolor, as I mentioned. Um, but one of the things I really want you to pay attention to here, you can get the same example of temperature. So the purple and orange, and this is pretty much it. There isn't much going on except for that. So 
highly edited on the color now also highly edited on the values look at how soft and light these areas are like this uh, cap here uh, some of the the frames of the windows in the background even some of the figures themselves um, so what happens here is to create a strong atmosphere and a strong sense of light and shadow he heavily edit, edits those and he's a master of that whether it's through values here or through temperature also demonstrated here he's really a master of that this is one of my favorite one of his favorite uh, one of my favorite works of his um, a bunch of artists painting such a clever piece of art and again look at the editing of the colors just pure orange yellow red so he from the get-go minimizes the color scheme to a very few paints which allows you to focus on the, te the the values and really get that atmospheric look now if you look at the artists from here this right section to the left section it actually goes lighter and more red from kind of an understanding that the the scene goes a little hazy so lighter but also more affected by the sunlight because the sun is kind of passing through the people in a way so you get this red effect which is very clever uh, and notice how the contrast becomes stronger the closer it gets to us so immediately your mind goes to this area and you look at all of the beautiful details of these two artists especially and then the more you go into the distance the more it fades away look at these beautiful brush marks of the cast shadows on the ground but right out the gate very simplified in terms of the colors that's one thing i want you to pay attention to here's another one very minimized in terms of the color scheme just focusing on these purples and greens and oranges so a very secondary um color based palette the the highlights are actually blue uh, so that's a nice effect and look at all the editing in the background in terms of what you see through the glass that immediately becomes lighter softer fewer details and we focus really on what's here inside that uh, garage scene or whatever oil change you see here a lot of paintings that he does are in these garages and, and um, it's just really nice or car mechanics uh, shops now look at the colors again if you just look at that you have strong oranges strong blues and all the rest is uh, very uh, muted so muted greens muted purples um, a very nice choice to make some details stand out and it really shows you that you can make the highlights whatever color you want they can be blue as in this example which is, isn't as common to see on watercolor here's another one highly atmospheric again one of the main things Obviously, you'll notice the colors, yellows and blues, soft yellows too. Nothing mixes too much, so you get maybe a bit of green, but it's pretty much an individual yellow and an individual blue from farther to closer. Now, look at the reversal here. Farther is actually warm and closer is actually cool. So that gives off a feeling of maybe a snowy day or maybe a cool day or maybe something else, maybe uh, sunset, who knows. Um, but the values themselves, look at that as well highly simplified from light to dark and that's it look at the tree here something we didn't discuss enough is the details fewer details fewer like just one or two or three brush marks to show the texture of the tree trunk you don't need much more look at the car basically nothing there it's just the basic shape the basic shape of a cube or an elongated a rectangular three-dimensional boxy shape and on top of that just the window is a bit of a highlight and that's it that's all you really need um, so yeah beautiful beautiful work here again highly simplified shapes just you you see the main shapes like boxes okay rectangles uh, and then on top of them the minimum details necessary just for the windows and, and this one is even more fleshed out now I do want to direct your attention to this section here um, look at these just messy details they still tell the story this to me looks like a couple of cars parked because of how they catch the the sunlight so that's a really really nice effect look at the person just a few very basic shapes and that those high key highlights really make the person pop um just beautiful he has a, an excellent way of simplifying again the values and the colors background here barely any details this building barely any details just a few for the windows for these ledges or pieces of wood that hold the rooftop look at this bridge connected to the trees and everything as this isn't watercolor it's less of a, a blended edges but it's still simplified in terms of the, the details look at these boats here 
in the distance. Immediately they register as boats, but there's nothing there in terms of details. Same goes for the details within the water. Very simplified. And as long as you have one area that has a few details that are more visible, that's all you really need. Now here's another one, very uh, crazily impressionistic, but if you kind of squint your eyes, zoom back out a little, look at this. This is just so, so nice. Uh, so yeah, really good in terms of simplification, removing details, reducing things, just spectacular. Let's move on to the next artist. Here we have Mark Foley. Now, unlike um, James Gurney, lots of simplification in the colors and in the values. Here you'll see simplification heavily relying on the shapes and very similar to Victoria in that regard. Shapes, connections. Okay, we will go fast over Mark Foley, but I do want to mention he's one of my all-time favorite artists. Watercolor, but using multiple um, mediums, I believe, to change the water's properties to make it flow a little differently. Look at the shapes, just one big shape connected, one big shape connected, and it's all connected, connected to the shadows, connected to between the rooftops, between the buildings, such a beautiful touch, and then you have these maybe foliage, just splattering, simplified into splatters. Uh, here's another one, look at this large shape, it's all connected all of these connections. The beauty here is in those edges, so you get very distinct and pretty and high contrast edges, and that tells the story of maybe a studio and uh, windows and the light from outside and the books placed on the desk and all of that. Look at this, just one big wash for everything, skipping the highlights, connecting, like he loves that strong, uh, beautiful blue. Uh, I love how you see all of these Everything merges. The ground, the building, it's all connected together. Now look at the shapes, how simplified they are. It's like a line and another line and another line. It's just a box. Look at the tree here. One shape, all connected. No individual brush marks like we are very often see. It's just one shape. And that tells the story in such an effective way. The color does the work here, which are also quite simplified, again. And I love how he keeps the palette minimum um, to just maybe a few warms and a few cools. Um, and he makes sure to bring out that emphasis. But again, this is all about the shapes. Look at the, the simplicity of the shapes and the connections. Uh, usage, a lot of usage of opaque paint from what I can tell. Look at this boat. It's just connected to the ground. Everything is connected. Uh, the shadows are kind of added and make the separation. But this uh, orangey, very muted yellow pink is the same wash as this kind of in the background, the same, same wash as the ground. It's just so nice. And the values are also simplified. Look at this kind of a very light shadow casting from the window. It's a lot of, it's very complex, by the way. I don't expect you to translate this into actual results at all. I'm just trying to expand your horizons into the different ways of simplifying that are possible and, are, and work really well. Now look at this one again, this beautiful mud kind of orange rust and then a blue. And look at these shapes here. It's all connected. This is one big shape. It, it, the paint just flows between them. Uh, the technique to achieving this may be super complex, really, but, but it's just in terms of how it's planned, it's planned to be one shape. Look at the background here. This is one shape. Now, what does this teach us? The more you can make these connections, the better sometimes to simplify the message. The, the entirety of the message, look at this section here. How do we know that we're looking at maybe large pots? Just by these uh, circles here, the ovals. This, there's nothing here. This is not painted. It's the contrast between this inside and the outside that tells the story of the pot here. It's the negative shape around it. Uh, and as much as you can edit these shapes together, sometimes it's the better. This one also, like, look at the colors. So good. Very, um, very bold statement with the colors. I'm going to show you this strong blue, strong green, strong red, um, and strong purple. Maybe this is more of a muted purple, but still very clear message on the colors, very clear shapes, not a lot of details necessarily, just some splashes here and there. Look at these beautiful pots and like there's so many of them. I wish we could go over uh, over them in more detail. I just don't want this to be a super duper long video and you can just browse any of these artists works online. Look at these boxes. It's just one big shape. Connections, always making these connections. If you let's zoom out a bit, squint our eyes. This is one big shape, this blue and this red. It's all connected. 
really is all connected. This is just one big shape that skips the highlights, essentially skips the windows, skips the light cast by the windows, uh, uh, skips these highlights here around these shapes. It's just so beautiful and very limited color scheme. Look at this simplicity here. Just uh, a fountain, a few windows for the building behind it, a few trees highly simplified in the shapes. This is like a great example of how even when you reduce it even more, you get a very clear and beautiful message. Um, just spectacular. I love, love, love his works. I couldn't remove any of these, honestly. I wanted to go over all of them. Look at these. Um, I don't know if it's va violins or contrabass or like it's probably something I don't know what the name is. This is one of my all-time favorites of his, by the way. I love this one. Um, so yeah, this is Mark Folly for you. Let's go over the next one. Here we have Sargent. We're going to blast through these as well. Background. Look at this. It's just nothing there. It's one wash and then a few touches of uh, opaque paint. The thing that really tells the story here is this lemon tree or lemon small tree, very small tree, and the, the negative shape around it. But all the rest, look at the simplification here. It's beautiful. Now, here we have a simplification in details, even more than previous examples. Look at the ripple, ripples. All you need is just da -da -da -da, a few wavy lines. The buildings here, nothing there, really nothing there. The steps are just... Uh, shape, 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 and always the simplification of colors. Sorry if you can hear that uh, ambulance. Look at the oranges, blues, greens, very sim simplified color scheme. Um, now here I wanted to, I'm going to give you one specific thing for every painting. So here colors, just red. So right off the gate, it's just, there's nothing but red here, almost. Just a few more colors for the shapes and skin tone, but just pretty much red. Um, so you can just choose one color. Just think about it. Just choose one color and run with it and look at the results you can produce. Now the background, as, as I mentioned, just look at that. Everything is so loose because all of our attention goes to the person. And there's a lot of simplification in the terms of the folds and clothes. Uh, we're going to look at that a little more in detail in a few more. Uh, look at the water here, the ripples, just crisscross lines reds and oranges and he loves that temperature thing like using a lot of uh, oranges and, and purples and blues in the same kind of area it really gives off the impression of, of um, um, just light and and his simplification is very clever this it's misleadingly clever because he is able to look at the entire thing and turn it into just five brush marks that look realistic still so this is something very unique like if we zoom out look at all of these details they look so real this looks like this these just look at these dry uh, lighter lines it looks like the water flows over a shiny rock um, so I don't expect you to be able to do that at all. I'm not. Um, but I just want you to take the essence of what Sargent is doing. Look at these beautiful simplification of the riffles and, and details um, in the clothes. That's the main thing I wanted to show you here. Not to mention the background as well, uh, how it's simplified. With Sargent, it's tough because everything is simplified to a, to an insanely to an insanely realistic degree. Somehow, he is able to preserve that. Here, the choice of colors: just a few blues, a few oranges, and whatever's in between, like a little bit of purple, a little bit of muted green. But the the emphasize here. And by the way, here there's a very dominant blue. So he decided probably to go for a very strong blue and mute the rest, like the oranges, the blue, the the greens, the purples are all muted. So choosing one color to be saturated and having all the rest muted is a very good means of simplifying the message for the viewer. That's something I'll always remind you. It's very important. Um, look at this. just beautiful. Like what's simplified here? Everything. But still the message comes across highly realistic as well. Again, this it's Sargent's crazy ability to turn something into fewer brush marks while maintaining that realism. Look at these details here in the in the clothes in the um, sc uh, scarf or whatever this is. Look at all the just individual brush marks that are placed in the right position to tell the story of this texture of the fabric. So, so clever. Uh, here I want to show you how all of the shadows have been simplified in a way because he kind of merges the the, uh, the guitar players, whatever th these music instruments are, with the floor, with the ground, and with the dancer, and with everything. So you get a very unified shape 
uh, very chiaroscuro kind of feeling to it. Uh, the colors are highly muted, so a decision to go for a low saturation painting is really nice, which makes these reds really pop. But really, the main one for me here is look at how it's just connected. If this is super dark, and this is super dark. No reason to paint them individually. Merge them together, make the message clear. Make the light and shadow on the faces a little more bright and, and poppy uh, by merging these details. Um, watercolor, very simplified. Look at the merging of the peripheries with the background here. Soft edge and then a clear edge. Um, very simplified color scheme of lots of reds, oranges, and then a few muted yellows, maybe a touch of blue here and there. Very clever. Sargent is something special. Here's a more simplified version of water ripples than the one we've seen earlier. Just a few crisscross marks, balanced with some larger shapes with a bit more flow to them. Um, great use of the lighter sections of the paper that probably have been tinted with a bit of yellow, or maybe that's just yellowing over the years, but that's Sargent for you. Just incredible now let's jump into the next artist manel plana i did show uh, this artist in my painting master series as well this is look at let's look at it from afar we can tell we're looking at kind of a tight narrow street scene uh, look at nothing there like barely any details the people look at the people here it's just a shape that that's been painted around okay and i want you to really think about it how can you bring out a shape i'm going to take a sip of my coffee, how can you um, create a shape by painting around it? You don't need much more than that. That's really beautiful. Look at this. Just nothing in the details. Just a, a, an interpretation of the buildings. Again, simplify the amount of details. Reduce it for areas that are not as prominent or you don't want to put as much emphasis on, as opposed to this strong contrast here. Now look at this strong orange. It really moves our attention towards it. Same here. Now, if you remove, get rid of this section here, you will maybe feel like some blue is missing. This blue here in the foreground really, play, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me point, uh, but this blue plays a very important role um, in balancing out all the warmth here. Uh, but, but with Manel, I would say the main thing is the details, just removing the details. There's nothing there within the details. This is just one wash with a lot of wet and wet and a few individual details later on added. Sorry, that's my phone. Um, I'm going to put it on quiet mode. Uh, the people here, nothing, but you can still tell they're going uphill, looking at a beautiful view of boats in the background. Because again, if you can suggest very few details, our brains, if anything, this is a testament to our ability to complete the details, you know. Another one, very simplified. Look at the people, just a few marks. And if you enjoy this look, look at this. This is really pushing it uh, all the way till the maximum simplification. Uh, if you can drop a few lines of the things you do want to show, like this awning, this shadow under the building's architectural details, the people, and then you just paint around these shapes with big, bold, very wet washes, you will get your message across. Not much is necessary. This is one of my favorites. Look at the trees here, very crooked, all, all, all leaning to the side, and they still look so, so nice. So yeah, you just, you can get away with so much. That's the main message here. Okay, next up we have uh, Turner, just a master, simplifying everything that, in terms of colors, details, values. We're gonna go through this really fast. Look at this, just a few shapes of color, it looks good. This could look like a kid's painting, but the, the, don't let it fool you because the the and the kids' paintings look beautiful too. But the the composition here is so clever in terms of just the shapes and the sky and the imbalance and balance between them. And again, if you may look at this and see nothing, but just have in mind that this can be appreciated. Um, look at this. Just lots of yellows and greens. Very atmospheric simplification in the background of just. The shape of the building, a few windows, this tower of maybe it's a church, cathedral, whatever. Look at the trees, just nothing in there. Nothing in there. And his style was very different uh, if you compare it to Sargent's in, in, the, in the way he simplifies. But I do want you to see the colors. The colors, this was the main thing that popped with Turner's works, is just how he chooses a specific color scheme and runs with it. Um, and it really clears up our view um, of like this is this is the most colorful one in a way it has a lot of everything oranges and, and purples and greens just so clever like I wouldn't even attempt to fully understand why he did things the way he did but 
it's just beautiful. It's very, like, again, older works for sure. Um, the thought that things looked like that and that we have some kind of a record of them is mind-blowing, really. Uh, but look at all these hazy, barely any details in the background. And forget about technique. Again, you may paint with a different medium. Forget about technique, but look at the balance. This is very dark compared, and all of this section is very dark compared to all of the soft background. So immediately we feel this strong solidness to everything that's close to us. Um, just very beautiful. Look at the softness of this one. Fewer colors, again, blues, purples, oranges. Um, very uh, exaggerated in that regard. And nothing is really clear, and it shouldn't be. Like, you can't tell the makeup, really, the faces or details of the people. Is this a face? A very strange face. Um, but the overall message comes across. Uh, gathering of people feels very divine in a way strong sunlight beautiful this may be like a fountain i don't know the stories behind these and if you do that's great um, but just beautiful so much to take from turner as well and i believe that's the last one so we have chen chung wei who i also reviewed uh, most of these i reviewed in the painting master series this is the last one we'll look at uh, a little more a little closer to what we're used to so maybe most of my viewers at least i know uh, with, from the watercolor world. Look at the, the background here. How tempting would it be to actually paint every single leaf? No need to. Look at the background here. Highly simplified. Just a few details scratched out, maybe with a credit card or something like that. And that's all you need because the focus here is the flowers. And I see this mistake all the time of trying to bring out all of these details. And there is a conflict of interest. You want to look at the flowers, but you're attracted to the details. Now, the reason the, the photo can get away with it is that it's a, it's a, a hyper-realistic rendering. You see everything and it's, everything is super accurate because it's a photo. But when you paint... Uh, the message can very easily be lost because we're painters and not photographers um, by doing too many details. The message can very easily get lost in all of the details. So it's something you want to pay attention to. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Color scheme, very simplified to just a few very muted colors like the, the green and yellow and red. And that's pretty much it with some touches of blue. Um, very organic feeling. So the blue creeps into the yellow and the red creeps into the green and everything is kind of merged together. Now look at the peripheries of his paintings. That's one really good thing to focus on. There isn't a lot of contrast here. It's just one shape that he painted around some of the highlights. There aren't a lot of highlights too because you don't want to bring too much attention to it. Same goes for here. Here's a little more heavy on the highlights but it's still in the, in the balance of everything. It works really well. The background's details are just a few wet and wet touches. Um, uh, which brings our focus to the buildings. Again, if you put too many details here, you'll lose the focus from here, from the, the buildings and the city and the rooftops, which are lovely. Um, here's one very um, direct simplification on the axis of colors. So yellow all the way to blue, very dominant in this one. Um, the values, look at how, look at this shape here. It's just one big shape of yellow on a lighter yellow, maybe a yellowy orange on a lighter yellow background, um, which, which again, sends us all the way to the foreground. Um, so two main things here. You always want to remember values and colors and temperature. Um, colors and temperature kind of go together for me at least. Um, so these are always the means you have at your disposal. Now shapes, okay? Something very clever that Qian, uh, Qing Wei does. This is just one one big shape and he loves to leave these white highlights but this is really one big shape there it's and it's connected it's all connected to uh the from the building to the people to the cars to the foliage you see it's just one big shape and you can put the shape in and then put the details on top of that if you you know you, there's a limit to how many things we can render at once so you put a big shape Take your time with it. You vary the colors within it. Some um, different, you know, reds and blues and greens and yellows. Uh, but it's just one shape. And if you can work with that one shape and expand it and make more interesting spots within it and play around with its edges, you will get something beautiful and simple to the eye. How simple is this area that, le that leads us to... Not easy to paint, by the way. Again, not easy to paint, but simplified um, visually so that we actually are attracted to this area, to look at the people that are coming towards us, to this building in the foreground, that's also quite um, empty of details. Um, here's another one, like nothing there. All of the background is one big shape of blues and greens. 
um, which attracts us to this tree, a very um, uh, traditional looking structure and area, like almost like a Japanese garden. Uh, and you can even tell the people here, just one small figure here, a few small figures there. Now, again, don't let the simplified aspect of it fool you. A lot of experience is needed to be able to paint this way. A lot of experience. So simplify doesn't mean easy to paint. But if you can minimize your shapes to very few, you will have an easier time and the viewer will have an easier time. Look at this. Just big, big shape. Fewer details. The details are in the people here. And a lot of these were done wet and wet. So you get this blended effect to them. This, you don't need to know exactly what's going on here. You don't need to see every line of this um, ledge or fence. Uh, you don't need to see every window here. You don't need to see any windows in this section. Why? Because we see the details here. This has gone to the wayside. You can add them if you want to simplify something else, a different aspect. But uh, that's how he does it here. Um, and I believe that's one of the last ones. Very complex shapes, but still simplified in terms of connections. Okay, a lot of them. All of this left section is connected. All of this right section is connected. And we have this gap here showing the sky. Um, in terms of shapes, like a master of connecting shapes. And if you want to add more separations later on, it is possible by adding details after it dries. Like these lines running across from the right to the left, making that connection here, cutting through this large shape in a beautiful way, adding these uh, white um, opaque paints or scratching it out. Uh, by this adding more details and more separations to the very few simplified shapes that were there um, earlier. Here's another one. Look at this chair. There is no need to make it a separate shape. So it's just connected to the background. There is no need to put in too many details on the wall because it's just maybe a window, something like that. The shape of the building is connected with the shadow. No need to stop here and then paint a new shape because that will blend out the message in a way that will um, make it a little less punchy. And again, feel free to make more separation in shapes and more simpl simplification in the colors or in the uh, details within the shapes. That's fine. That you can do it in many ways. There isn't one way to, that's correct to paint at all. Tons of ways that can work. One of the successful ways is connecting shapes. Uh, and it's, this is something that's reoccurring throughout this entire, uh, the entirety of all the lessons and all the works we've seen here, really. So this is the last one. I really hope you enjoyed this one. A bit of a longer one, but it was important for me to show you everything uh, and, and a variety of different ways of simplification. And even that is within the narrow niche of impressionistic uh, painting. You can go even more abstract. You can go even more hyper-realistic, but that's kind of my niche and the things I enjoy. So it's what I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now let's wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you survived all of these. We looked at quite a lot of artworks and I do think it is important to, uh, again, expand our horizons in that regard and learn from as many artists as we can for a certain period of time. And then what I like to do is kind of close up and actually apply what I learned. And I find that just watching it a lot uh, will inject itself naturally into my own style. And I'm not too scared of being like copying others or something like that, because if you take then a time period to focus on your art, to look at photos, not paintings, photos, uh, plan air and do things your way, you will find that slowly you discover more and more what is your uniqueness and your style within it. Um, and I do th hope you enjoyed seeing all of these works because these paintings are beautiful and I really chose the best of the best that I could find. Not saying the best artists, there are plenty of great artists out there. There's no way to review all of them, but for the artists I chose, I really wanted to choose the best paintings that make my heart flutter in a way because some paintings you just look at them and you stop for a minute. Um, so I hope that kind of, uh, it's, it's interesting for you to see what kind of works these are. So with that, I want to thank you so much uh, and I will see you in the next lesson.